This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two, one. Welcome back to DBL, or welcome back for Jeffrey. How yes, are you? It's good to be back. He's I feel back, good. He's back, everybody. The Schroeder. It's Thursday, <laughs> August 13th. Which nobody calls me. <laughs> I do it's now. It's good to be back. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Tori here with Jeff. Brandon joins us from home. Brandon, you got your buddy back. It looks like you did a nice clean shave. You look great. Wait a minute. Is that is that John Cena over there? Movie WWE <laughs> wrestler and movie star? <laughs> Have I just forgot to recognize who I was. you, Jeff. Welcome I, back. I've never done wrestling. But yeah, yes, why the, the wrestling movie, comment? I love the it. Schroeder. The that, Schroeder. That would apparently be my wrestling name. The, yeah, it wouldn't Schroeder. scare anyone. No yeah. one. Welcome Are we back, filming buddy. this show? What's going <laughs> right, on right, right now? What's going started. on? Thank you, Brandon. Um, tell me about uh, the movie you were in because everyone wants to know where were you? What's going on? Just tell me a little bit the about movie what's going we're on. in. You're in, I said. <laughs> You're such a noise. This is great. Um, you know what I liked about the movie? There were cuts. So there we'd were cut cuts. all this out if we were actually filming the movie. But it was <laughs> terrific. I do want to start off with um, COVID testing because a lot of people asked about that. We had 50 employees or 50 crew and cast members on set, 330 COVID tests performed, 17 days, zero positive. So I do want to say that very, very, very careful. As you can see, that's some of the scenes that um, we shot there. I can't give away too much, but the movie's called The Inheritance. And and um, some names that you might know in there, Mina Suvari, um, Jaleel White, and I play the oldest big brother, and I have three younger sisters, as you saw in that video, and we go on as kind of a scavenger hunt type thing to look for our inheritance, so. I, it sounds awesome. It was great. I also think it's ironic you always play big brother, constantly, big There was brother. a little, a little, Easter egg in there, if you will, oh. to, hey, so you're someone's big brother. So there, my quote for, quote unquote, I was on Big Brother. Nice. I don't know why I quote unquote that, but. Hey. But whatever, the experience was great. It was wonderful, learned I learned a lot. I was scared going in. I took myself outside that comfort zone and I'm proud that I've did it, uh, that I've put it together today. Bravo, air high five. Fantastic yes. job. All right, well, uh, we're getting to the news here. I'm sure you've heard the news about Kamala Harris. Jeff, we haven't even asked you how you felt about her as a potential VP. Wow, I'm sure getting my minutes yeah, in here, yeah. huh? <laughs> a lot of camera time for Jeff. Sorry, Brandon, yeah. The so, Schroeder. Tori, I do want to talk a little bit about this because obviously I have been out of the loop filming. We had some night shoots, so I haven't been on social media a lot, but um, I don't know a lot about her. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I do not know a lot about her policies on what's going on. I was looking back to getting the show and talking to you, and I don't mean this in a raw, in, in a bad way or stereotypical way. What I've seen online is that she's a female and she's a female of color, and she also has some Indian descent in her um, uh, Native American descent as well. That's all well and good, and I'm happy for everyone who you know that's their leader and that's who they want. I don't know what, what her policies are. 12% of America doesn't know who, are, who uh, Mike Pence is. That's almost 30 million people don't know. So I don't know a lot about her. I'd like to know more about her. I even drafted a quarterback in the NFL and be like, you know what, he's, he's uh, African American and he's beautiful. Tell me about what he did in college. So oh, that's what I want to know more fair. about. First off, she's Indian, not Native American. Indian from oh, okay. India. Oh, okay. I corrected myself because I said Indian. I'm like, that's not proper. <laughs> right, you got to so get thank you for that. You're yes. welcome. Second of all, she really made her name as District Attorney of California, and she was very, very good at prosecuting people. And a lot of people think she put maybe too many people away in jail, or some people think she didn't do enough. That's sort of where she made her name. In the Senate, she's on the Justice Committee. She's been much more progressive about that. And and the main thing you should know about Kamala Harris right now is if she ever goes at you for a debate or questioning, she will end you. She is the most skilled on the Hill right now at any kind of debate, questioning. She can take any kind of situation and sort of turn it quietly in her favor, which is really hard to do. Okay, and I do want to get Brandon involved in this, for but sure. I'm going to be honest again. What does the vice president do? Well, that's in D.C. It's known as the most useless job in America, but there a lot of go. people, let's just say this very quickly. He, he, these are the two oldest candidates in American history. So we got to look at the VP as someone that might have to take over the presidency. That's got to be in people's minds. So that's what you've got to look at Kamala Harris as a possible presidential pick. All right, and I, uh, sorry, Brandon, I totally want to get you in here, but I don't like the fact that people are saying, let's get Kamala Harris in as vice president because maybe Biden might die while he's in office. That's not very positive. I didn't positive. say Biden, I say Biden or Trump. They're the two oldest. And I'm saying it. I'm just saying that's, that's what that's people realistic. are talking about. And I think that's kind of a morbid point of view 
to vote for our next president. Morbid, but realistic. Brandon, please talk. Please talk, Brandon <laughs> London. How are you? And then we're going to get to comments <laughs> you guys have about Kamala. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, let me let me jump in right here because uh, I I feel as though I watched this woman during her race for the presidential nod for the Democratic. Uh, 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 being a, being on the Democratic side, and you've seen her co do countless interviews on things like The Breakfast Club. She's been on The View, and you see the way this woman speaks. And you go back and you look at her history or her experience. She's ready to be not only a VP, but she's ready to be the president of the United States as well. When you go back and you look at the experience this woman brings to the table, one thing that I'm going to keep an eye on now, now that she's introduced her family, her husband, is how, because we've seen how she's handled the attacks politically, how is she going to handle the attacks when people are going after her, her family? Sarah Palin was talking about that today on Good Morning America. So I, I think we know enough about her from her running for the, for the seat of presidency on the Democratic Party. But I want to see how she handles things that we don't know about because you know people are going to come after her family. You know people are going to dig up more about her past and her policies. So 82 days left, I believe, Tori. It's, it's going to be a very interesting 82 days before we pick who is the next president and vice president of the United States. Very, very true. We got a ton of comments yesterday about Kamala from you guys, and that's what the show is all about. We had a chance to share some of them, but we wanted to read more today to get you guys more included. So Leroy wrote in and says, Amy Klobuchar was the best qualified, not, just not the right race. Kind of speaking on what you were saying is, was she picked because she's black, which is some people's point of view. I don't take that point of view. I think some people do. Uh, Annie writes, Dems are racing at a fierce speed towards socialism. This will take away civil liberties. Trump isn't perfect, but he's fighting for our freedoms. And before you read the next one, I never said that she was picked because she was black. No, I'm saying. I just don't want even that assumption totally going on. Understand. Okay. That is what a lot of people say. I'm just going to be okay, very honest. Okay, but you made oh, it seem like woman? I said that. No, I'm so sorry. But she was picked because she was a woman. I will say that. Which I do kind of think. Now, if you want to say. Now, if you want to kill me for this, go ahead. <laughs> but I do. I think that's kind of absurd to say. I'm just going to have a woman as my vice president, so I get more votes. Or do you think it's absurd that there's never been a woman in that high? I also of power? think. That, I also think right. that's absurd. But just to say, I'm going to pick one, no matter what the qualifications are. I'm not saying she might be the best choice. Okay. I'm digging myself a hole. Here, I understand that <laughs> she might be the best choice, but to say all men are now excluded is, is ridiculous as saying all women are excluded every or other all black time. people are excluded, uh, excluded from the past. I feel you. I feel you. Interesting. And Faye Collins says, I don't think it will make any difference who wins or loses. Nothing is going to change. This country is in a big mess. Brandon, what do you have to say about that? You know, for, for the people out there who think that she was just brought in just because of her color, do I think that it played uh, a part of it? Absolutely, because if you think about the Democratic uh, Democratic Party, you're thinking that the minorities, the people, the marginalized communities, the black and brown people. I get that. I understand that. But no way are we going to take away from this woman's resume what she has done and the fact that Biden and others have come out and said that, like I said earlier, she is ready to be VP and presidential ready from day one because of her work in the Senate, the Judiciary Committee. This woman is qualified, overqualified to be not only VP, but the president of the United States. So I get how, you know, the Twitter fingers and people are going to be <laughs> on social media saying, oh, she only got it because of her color. Absolutely not. When people go back and they look at the experience and the qualities that she brings to this to the seat, to this ticket, I believe a lot of people are going to get on board. Just, which just they wait. already have. Yeah, and just wait till a debate, and then you'll see her in action. And man, I would hate yeah. to be on the other side of that. Well, before we go to break, we've got an incredible rescue video. Great conversation, though. I know. I could talk about it all day. Which we can. And don't worry about being <laughs> on the other side of that. That'll never happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> An incredible uh, rescue video to share with you. Thanks to the quick thinking of one police officer, a man is alive. So his wheelchair is stuck on the train tracks. The officer runs over to help, but the chair is stuck. Like I said, she pulls him away just in the nick of time. Wow. The whole thing took less than 15 seconds. 
Okay, I'm supposed to say how lucky is he, but I really want to say how brave is she because, my God, she roared into action, got him out of there in the seconds. What do you think, Jeff? I love these videos. We need to see more oh. positive police videos. Yeah. They're out there. They're good people. We can't just look at the Internet and condemn everybody for, the you know, the faults of a few. So Wow. Again, we think yeah. police, not yeah. all police are bad. We just think the system, at least I do, can be fixed. Brandon, uh, what do you think of that video? Well, I, you, you just, I think of action movies where you look at it yeah. and someone gets saved by a hero just in the nick of time. And you're like, that only happens in, uh, in action movies. No, this is a real life hero going and saving someone's life. So uh, I tip my hat to her. Absolutely. Brandon, we will see you later. Coming up on DBL, you've got questions. Dr. Pyle Coley has the answers. Our medical expert is clearing up more coronavirus confusion. And speaking of the pandemic, our, most of our employees are working from home to help stop that spread. Great job, Tori, on saying that well. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> I missed it here. Introducing the future of fitness. It's every class. And Dr. Pyle Coley, our own medical expert, to clear up coronavirus confusion. And today she's answering your questions. She is wonderful in teal. Look at that. Teal meets Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. Absolutely. Um, the doctor is here. <laughs> our very first question comes from Karen, who asks, I read about a new nasal spray that could help prevent catching the virus. Is this true? What does Dr. Coley think about this? This is true, you guys, and it's a really cool, promising technology. So it's a nasal spray made up of what's called nanobodies, which are basically tiny little antibodies that are manufactured in the lab. And the idea is that even if you're exposed to the virus, you take a hit of this nasal spray, it prevents the virus from getting into your cells. Whoa. So I think of it really like plan B, so to speak. Wow. You know, if you have an accidental exposure to someone, take a hit of the nasal spray, and it can prevent that from happening. So this hasn't yet been tested in clinical trials. It's only been tested in the lab, so we have to await those results. But if it proves successful, I'm really optimistic that Whoa. this could help us bridge the gap until we get that vaccine. 
I like it. Whoa. I like that. <laughs> Doc, our next question says, I am really good about wearing a mask, washing my hands, and cleaning surfaces, but I am wondering, what should I be doing with things like my keys, my wallet, my purse, phone, wallet, keys? Oh, that was an phone. Adam Sandler thing. But sorry, Doc, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's a great question, Jeff, because that's stuff we handle a lot. And we do know that science tells us that virus can survive on metal for up to three days. So it's important to wipe those surfaces down regularly. I'm a little compulsive, so I've got a box of wipes in my laundry room. As soon as I come in from the garage, I wipe everything every day, once a day, my phone, my keys, my purse. But you should be doing it at least twice a week in order to make sure that you're not accidentally contaminating those surfaces. Smart. She keeps it in her laundry. That's very smart. All right, here's another one. We keep hearing how many people have died from COVID-19. I'm curious, how does that compare with the average number of deaths in a year without a pandemic? Yeah, so this is a tough one because every death we've had this year has been a death that we may not have had another year had it not been for the pandemic. And the statistics are so sobering, it really breaks my heart because we're losing, you know, a thousand Americans a day right now. And at the peak of the pandemic, it was 2,000 a day. And if we believe that IHME model, by the end of the year, COVID-19 related deaths are going to be the third leading cause of death after heart disease and cancer. So it's going to beat Alzheimer's, it's going to beat diabetes, it's going to beat accidents, it's going to beat all those other causes of death. So the burden of this pandemic has been tremendous on our community. All right, our final question, Doc, comes from Lori, and they want to know, my blood, bank, my blood bank in Phoenix keeps calling me since they are in desperate need of blood donations. How safe are blood donation centers during this time? So I know a lot of people are skeptical, Jeff, not just about blood donation centers, but even in terms of seeking medical care. And I really want to reassure people that if the proper precautions are being taken, these types of facilities are very safe. In fact, they may even be safer than going to the grocery store, going to the drug store, many of those other places that we frequent. So if you have any doubt, Lori, just call up the center and see what precautions they're taking. But if they're in need of blood, it would really be the right thing to do to go and donate blood if they have those precautions in place. Especially if there's a shortage. You know, Al Jackson, our co-host, donates blood all the time. And someone was a fan of DBL oh. and a fan of me, the blood guy. So that was a big deal for me. I have no idea what you just said. They called me and it FaceTimed and it was so nice. What does that have to do with Al giving blood? Because it was the blood, the phlebotomist that took it that was a fan of DBL. <laughs> phlebotomist, I didn't know that one, but hey, Dr. Coley learning from you, learning from Tori, I love it. <laughs> I love it too. Is that the right word, Doc? Am I saying it right? You're right, phlebotomist, that's perfect, hey, yeah. I'm taking that home with me. Yes, thanks yep. so much, doctor. No panic, of course, just prevention and precautions and some knowledge. Uh, we'll be right back, thanks again. It's all
Welcome back to DBL. Today's Heart Threads is all about girl power. Watch how a woman brought her fight for equal pay to the forefront by starting her own business. This single mom started a woman-run painting company. Kelly Forbes had been painting for years. I had full truck, full tools, all the skills, had been painting for over 10 years as I started as a teenager, and I was making 10, sometimes $15 less per hour than the men in the field. So she started her own business, Love Painting Company. Kelly hires other women, including single moms like herself. Her employees start out at $20 an hour. It's not all about us just making profits, it's about creating a culture and creating an environment where people can thrive. Kelly and her company are also giving back to the community, covering up graffiti and painting free for nonprofits. As Kelly's employee Melody Guzman says, Everybody says somebody's got to do it, but we're all somebody. We're all somebody. We'll be right back. Promotional consideration.
Tori, your line. <laughs> it's in the prompter. It's time for some <laughs> sweet, sweet deals. Earlier, Steph showed me some amazing products at even better prices. Here's today's DBL Deal Blast presented by MorningSave.com. What do you have for us today, Stephanie? First up, I've got this. It's the two-pack Mophie Power Station, and it's a power bank. So it can dramatically improve the life of your device for up to 29 hours. And it's got two ports, which means you can charge two devices at the same time. And normally this is $100, but right now it's only 29, which means you're saving 71%. Next, I've got something that's gonna add style to our wardrobes tour because this is the Laura Ashley Split Mesh Band Sunray Dial Watch. So it's got an ally design. It's a round with crystals, elegant mesh split strap mm. and clasp. And it's normally $195, but we've got it for $25. So our viewers will save 87%, Tori. We ladies all want ultra smooth, silky hair. Whoa. And you can get that with this. This is the Infinity Gold Blower Brush hair dryer and styler so it combines airflow with a dryer and it has a smoothing benefit of a brush in one tool so it drives smooths and styles your hair 80% faster than your normal routine. So normally, this is $300. Now, it's only 25, which means you're saving 92%. All right, last but not least, Tori, I've got the perfect item to help relax your muscles. So this is the Palm NRG Full Body Pulse Massager and Ooh. Belt. So this handheld and rechargeable massager gives electric pulses to the minor aches and pains that are in your body. So normally this is $425 and we've got it for 29, which means you're saving 93%. All right guys, head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices. You can even visit MorningSave.com on your smartphone. I have not been to the spa because of COVID-19. Has anyone else been like dreaming of getting a massage? Are you a massage? Brandon, are you a massage person? <laughs> I, you I don't mind pampering myself or getting a nice pedicure. I like a nice pedicure. Wow, how very cool and metro and open about you. That's yeah, awesome. I like it. I dig it. I dig it. I like Brandon, it. are you a pedicure guy? Uh, not so much a pedicure, Jeff, because I still have like feet. My feet look like I played professional football, <laughs> but I could really use them. I could really use a manicure, though. My nails are atrocious. I like that men are paying attention now because yeah. it's, it's it shows that you care. And you know, if you care about you, you're gonna care about me. I, was, I'm, I might cry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Missed them all. Okay. All right. That was a good one. That was a good one. Brandon, we love you. DBL's new every day. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye, guys.